Whoville citizens. I just wanted to talk about um, a couple of things. Um, the first thing I wanted to talk about was just um, what is it like to be pregnant with type 1 diabetes? Um, so to start off, when I first got pregnant, um, of course it was my first pregnancy, so I had no idea I was pregnant. Um, I wasn't in good control of my diabetes, which was also pretty scary. Um, but yeah, so I found out I was pregnant. I didn't know much about um, anything about what you needed to do before you got pregnant when you're diabetic or any of that. Um, I kind of went in it um, kind of ignorant to all of that. Um, so that's kind of why I wanted to make you know a video about being pregnant with type 1 diabetes to educate some people. So what is it like? Um, firstly, it is almost completely normal. Um, at least for me it was. I know that in some situations, of course, like if you can't get in control of it when you're pregnant, um, it's going to be a lot more scary. And it was scary just because, like I said, I didn't know anything about it going into it. But it was, it was pretty normal um, how I would expect any other pregnancy to go. Um, so yeah, I found out I was pregnant and um, the only real difference was that I had to go to a high risk pregnancy doctor simply because I have the diabetes um, and that causes risks. So some of the risks that you take when you're pregnant and you have type 1 diabetes is firstly if you're not in control of your diabetes like I was um, in your first trimester it can cause um, birth defects such as spinny, spinia bifida I'm so sorry I don't know how to pronounce that but basically it's a disorder where the spine doesn't completely form together and um, it's pretty bad um, other things it can cause are um, brain damage of course and things like that. Um, the other thing is you have to keep your blood sugars very controlled when you're pregnant like I mentioned um, otherwise what happens is our diabetic bodies give too many sugary nutrients to the baby um, and what that can cause is the baby to be very large um, that's more for like high blood sugars, which are blood sugars, when you're pregnant, usually blood sugars above 100 to 120, um, those are considered high blood sugars when you're pregnant, usually when you're, when you're just, you know, normal, not pregnant or whatever, you know, it depends on your doctor and your body, but, um, and I'm sure the pregnant, um, target levels also depend on your doctor and your body, um, but yeah. On the other side of that, if your blood sugars are too low, below 80, for example, um, the baby isn't, of course, getting enough nutrients. And also, when your blood sugar goes low, your body kind of kicks into this mode of survival mode, kind of. Um, I know it's, of course, different for everyone. Every illness, every disease is different for each individual, but for... The people that I know with diabetes, we all agree that when our blood sugar goes low, we just get ravenous, we, we have to eat food, and all of that. And of course that's bad because when you eat food, you aren't thinking about what you're eating, you're just thinking about raising your blood sugar. So you can end up eating some things that are not necessarily good for your pregnancy, <laughs> or for your baby. Um, other than that, um, the biggest thing they checked for... Uh, they did anatomy scans way more often. I was kind of spoiled um, during my pregnancy because of my type 1 diabetes. Um, I got, you know, anatomy scans once a month um, after my first trimester. Um, and, and I would also get another ultrasound, not a full anatomy scan, but just an ultrasound, you know, to make sure the baby's okay. Um, about every two weeks and then of course toward the end of my pregnancy I was getting them just about every week um, 
specific to my pregnancy because um, everything was going good. As soon as I found out I was pregnant, I got um, in control of my blood sugar, which was good. At the same time, it was bad because um, what happened was because my blood sugars were so high when I started out and then I corrected um, so quickly and got them in control so quickly, it affected my eyes and what happened was um, some blood vessels in my eyes ruptured and um, my vision became impaired. I could not drive at night. I still can't drive, I'm still not comfortable driving at night. I can drive at night, I can see at night, but I'm still not really comfortable with it. Um, but yeah, my vision became blurry, it was very affected, it's still not what it was before. But um, being in control of your blood sugar is great, and it was great that I got it in control. But it did affect my eyes, that's one thing you gotta keep in mind. And they do recommend that you are in control of your blood sugar for at least three months before you get pregnant. Um, which of course I wasn't, so yeah. Um, also, probably toward the end of my pregnancy, um, I had high levels of amniotic fluid. Um, the doctor said that that's usually caused by high blood sugar, which I didn't have, so I don't think it had anything to do with that, but as a educational purpose, <laughs> if you do have high blood sugar during your pregnancy, especially toward the end, you can develop high amniotic fluid. Um, so what my doctor did for that was we did an amniocentesis, which if you don't know what that is, basically the doctor takes this little, really thin, long needle and sticks it in your belly and te uh, takes a sample of the amniotic fluid um, to make sure the lungs are matured or whatever they're searching for. Usually genetic um, warnings or whatever. Earlier in the pregnancy, I did have mine towards the end because of my high amniotic fluid and the doctor just you know, took a sample to make sure his lungs were okay because he wanted me to deliver the baby as soon as I could. And I was almost 38 weeks when I went to the hospital and was induced for labor. Um, and I'll save my labor and delivery story probably for another one because I know YouTube and everyone loves their labor and delivery stories. <laughs> so I'll just keep that for a separate. But, um, like I said, yeah, you can completely, I just want you all to know, you can completely enjoy your pregnancy when you have type 1 diabetes. There is nothing out there that says you cannot get pregnant when you have type 1 diabetes. Originally, I thought, because growing up, you know, I was born in 95, and back then, you really could not, could not get pregnant if you had diabetes, but nowadays, the medical technology is so much more advanced, so there is nothing that can stop you. Um, of course, if you aren't in control, it is a lot more difficult to get pregnant and all of that, but you can get pregnant. I mean, I'm not your doctor, so I'm not going to tell you, you know, oh, go get pregnant if you want to. That is between you and your doctor, but as far as an overall, in general thing, you can get pregnant with type 1 diabetes. You can have a successful pregnancy. You can have babies that aren't huge. Ollivander was 7 pounds, 12 ounces, <laughs> which seems kind of big, but that's actually a normal size for an uh, American baby. Um, so, there's a fly up there, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, so you can have a completely successful pregnancy with diabetes, um, normal pregnancy, enjoy your pregnancy just like every other woman out there. And yeah, so it's really just not that bad um, other than, you know, you will have to be able to commit to going to high-risk appointments just to make sure the baby is growing. Oh, I did want to mention that also when you're pregnant with diabetes, um, to treat, to prevent, I should say, um, birth defects such as, or specifically, maybe not specifically, but a especially the spinal one I was talking about earlier, is they um, make you take folic acid that helps the spine form and all of that sort of thing. So anyways, I hope this was educational to you all. I hope this helped someone out there 
um, who may be like me and they don't know much of anything about um, being pregnant and having type 1 diabetes and I just hope it helped. I, I know that I would have loved a video like this to be out, you know, a year and a half ago when I first found out I was pregnant with Ollivander and I had no idea what I was going into with the, with the diabetes. So, yeah. I guess I will see you guys next time. Bye!